Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I'm gonna to show you how I cut a curved line with a straight cutting saw. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. All right, so what we have is a little tiny Juliet deck that we made into a seven foot radius. You can see the line that I need to cut because I'm putting a, a surface border in that's curved as well. And I have all the deck boards installed. Uh, some of them I've only pinned in place. They are not fully installed because I have to possibly remove some of them because since we have a waterproof bladder on this deck, I can't cut through the boards and through the bladder. That's a no-no that will damage the bladder and it could potentially leak. So what I have here is I have a Makita five and a half inch trim saw. It's model number 5005BA. And I have a five and a half inch by 36 tooth Tenryu uh, fine cutting blade. If you had a 12 inch blade, it would probably be, I don't know, maybe a 80 tooth blade. So for a five and a half inch blade with 36 teeth, it cuts like butter. Uh, I have this saw set to a specific depth. I only use this saw for one thing and one thing only and that's for cutting curved lines on decks. I do a lot of curves and a lot of circles and things like that. This saw is specifically set to a certain depth. I have a little bit of tape to protect the decking, which is kind of worn off, and I probably need to add some more for protection. Just a quick tip for you. Sometimes if you ever have a scuff or a scratch in your base plate, it can totally scratch up your deck while you're cutting, so you want to be careful about that. So this saw is set to just a little bit past one inch. So it technically does cut through the decking. So how do I not cut the bladder, you ask? Well, if you look over here, you'll see I have some door skins that I've ripped down into like two and a half to three inch widths. And I put them underneath my cut line that I'm about to cut the curve. And this allows me an eighth inch of play in my blade thickness so that I can cut through the decking and be able to cut the boards. You can see there's one right here that's not fully cut through because you can see the elevation changes. Like this board's higher than this board a little bit because we haven't pinned this down yet. We haven't installed it. I cut through all this and then I pull these out and then I, check my fit. If I don't like my fit, I'll sand it until I get it exactly the way I want it for shape. Then I'll detail the edges and then I'll install the board. I'll actually install all the screws around this perimeter first. Like this outside board right here, it has three screws in it, but they're not cortex because I'm going to probably have to pull these screws out to get my pieces out from underneath there. But it's the only way I know how to install these curved boards without damaging the bladder. Now, if we weren't doing a bladder and the deck was just G-tape because there's a bunch of flat blocking, I'd still try to protect it so I didn't cut through the G-tape. Sometimes if I get a little loose, I may cut part of a G-tape line. And if I do, then I'll take some black through the roof by Sashko and I'll run a bead along that cut line so that it protects it. But you don't wanna do that until the board is ready to go and you sand everything out and everything's perfect. Cause if you have to take that board on and off and you got some through the roof, it's gonna get over everything, all over your hands, all over whatever you're setting it down on and so on and so forth. So you gotta be careful about that. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna finish cutting this line and then we'll start detailing things. And I'll kind of show you guys exactly what I'm doing, how I'm doing it so that maybe it'll help you in your endeavors in the future, if you ever decide to do something like this, okay? Now, when I'm cutting, usually when you cut with a trim saw, there's two different lines of sight that you can use. There's a line of sight on the saw right here that actually, if you noticed, I've opened this line up. This used to be a thinner line, but it wasn't working for me. I took a grinder and I cut this open so it worked better for me. But when I'm cutting curves, I have to be so accurate that I actually follow the line with my saw. I used to mark this out with a graphite pencil and it was really hard to see. But since I started identifying the cut line with a white Pika marker, that's what I use. The Pika marker has a white lead instead of a graphite lead. It's so much easier to see and it makes it a little bit easier for me to trace. So I'm just gonna put the blade right on that white line and I'm gonna put our curved board up here and we're gonna check it and see how well we're doing. And if I like what I see, then I'll, I'll detail this edge. So let's just finish the cut and we'll go from there. So the one thing you want, because I'm using a saw that has power, so much of our tools nowadays are cordless. I don't have a saw that I like cutting detail work with 
that's cordless. I've had a few guys DM me say, hey doctor, you gotta try this uh, DeWalt cordless or you gotta try this Milwaukee cordless. That's great guys. For me, I don't have a lot of blue tools, but this blue Makita five and a half inch trim saw is a saw I'm used to using. I call this the 4K cut, not on this little deck, but if you screw this cut up, it can cost you $4,000 to fix. We don't like to screw this cut up. You have to be money. So if you're jittery or you're having a bad day, or you're not in a positive mode, or you don't have the confidence, don't make this cut until you're absolutely ready to do so because it'll cost you, man, if you mess it up. Enough talking, let's get some work done. All right, here we go. Now you can see over here, I've got one board that's much higher than another one, okay? So sometimes I'll try to push down on that. And part of that problem is because of the, the pieces that we have underneath that are protecting the bladder. So it's not a perfect system, but I've just learned how to adapt over. You gotta push down sometimes when you're actually cutting with the saw to make sure that these boards are down so that you can cut through the next one. If you don't quite get through that cut, then you're gonna end up using an oscillator to cut the finished cut off of here. But you can see right here, over here, that this board is fully cut through and I can just set that down and get it, get it out of the way. And you can kind of see what we are left with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish this cut and then we'll see what we end up with and what we have left to do for finish, to finish this off. And I'll show you my next step. Okay, I felt that kind of pin. I, I don't think this one's gonna get fully cut, but we'll see what happens. Well, okay, we'll say it cut through. There's a tiny little bit. If you look really close, there's a little bit of a fray left. So those are easy. You can either take a, a construction knife and go ahead and just slice it because you know you're safe. You, you're not gonna cut through the bladder because you're on this piece right here. Okay, yeah. I think I have one over here though that did not cut through and I'm gonna probably have to use a um, oscillator. So let's go over here and check that one out. This one's pretty, I could probably bang this with a hammer, but it's just as easy. I have protection under here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my oscillator and cut this out. There it is. Okay, so now my line's cut. It's not finished cut but it's close. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all of my shims. Now that I've made my main cut, I'm gonna pull my shims out. Some of them may come out easy like that. And some of them may not because they're probably pinched. Like see, there's a screw right here. They might be pinched. And that one came out pretty easy. And you can see, you know, we're cutting into this piece, but we didn't cut so deep that it cut into our bladder. I don't think I'm getting that one out. Let's try over here. All right. All right, that one came out. This one's gonna be a little stubborn as well. So I might need a pry bar, a little pry bar or something to get this out. There's a couple of different ways we do it. Okay, so this is pretty tight. I think this is our problem right here. Maybe loosen this up a little. Oops, okay, got that one out. Now I'm gonna come over here. So basically what I'm doing is just, I'm taking a pry bar and I'm putting it in the groove of some of the previous cuts or maybe the cut I just made, trying to get it to the edge. Once I get it to the edge, then I can just kind of pry it out. Once it gets to a certain point, you should be able to take it out. There, okay, now I have perfect lines. I have my curve cut. 
Now all I have to do is kind of clean this line up with the blower really quick, and then I can finish installing my screws for all of these areas. Then I'm gonna put my curve board up here, and I'm going to see how it fits. And we'll determine if we like the fit or not. Okay, now that I have a clean surface, I'm gonna finish installing the screws I need before I sand anything else. I wanna lock everything down, make sure it's the way I want it. Then I'm gonna put my curve board up here and check it and see how it looks. Now all these screws are gonna be cortexed. So no matter how many I put in here, they're gonna be have color matched corks that cover all these holes. So it's gonna look really nice when it's done. All right, so now all of our face screws are done. And now I'm gonna check the curved surface border against the fit and see if there's anywhere I need to adjust or sand. And I have a cordless belt sander that I'll use to run up along this edge right down here, and I'll shave it down so it fits this uh, border perfectly in case I might've got a little loose on my cut or it wobbled a little bit. I mean, nobody's perfect, so I don't anticipate that this line's gonna be perfect either, but let's check it out and see what it looks like. Okay, so I can see a little bit of a gap here. I could probably shave it right here so that this doesn't look like such a big gap in the line. And then I just kind of check it. And I also want to check my overhang and that kind of thing. And everything's looking pretty good. This side looks pretty good. You can see where there's a little bit of white left right here that I'm just a little bit uh, fat, I would say, where it kind of thins out here where there's a gap. So I'll probably come in and just sand out this white right here, and then I'll do a little sanding over there, and then I can go ahead and finish this line, and then I can install my curved surface border. All right, so right here, I can kind of see a nice equal gap, and then a nice equal gap, and then it starts to tighten up, and then right here, I'm touching. So right here, I want to maybe make a little bit of a note, I, and I can still see the white, my old pencil line. So I really want to sand this out too. So I'm gonna do a side mark on the decking from there to about here. So I know where to sand with my belt sander. I could even do a small mark on the top of the decking, but if I don't have to, it's pretty obvious where I need to sand. And then I might even go and go ahead and like accent this line a little bit on top, knowing I need to sand there. And then over here, I kind of have a similar problem. The reason this one doesn't look so hot at the moment, this is where I started my cut. And because it's such a unique cut, this is, you know, on a scale of one to 10, we're getting into the nine to 10 range because I had to start up against the house on a curve with nowhere to stand. And I was actually cutting like reverse from what I'm used to cutting when I plunged in and started this cut. And remember, we're trying not to damage the bladder. We're trying to cut on a curve. We're trying to cut it straight, as straight as possible. But when I started my cut, I actually had to use this part of the saw right here. I had to use the indicator instead of watching the blade because I, I wasn't able to when I first started my cut. It was virtually impossible. So this one, when I started my cut, was off a little bit. And now I'm gonna sand that out and try to finish it off nice. That's basically what's up. So I have three spots on my line that I really need to work on. The rest of it, I can just run the bell sander around it if I wanted to smooth it out. And sometimes I do that just, just for the heck of it. So uh, as far as the belt sander goes, there's one thing you need to worry about, and that's making sure that your belt sander isn't past that bottom edge. Because if it is, you're gonna tear up your G-tape or your bladder. Trust me, I'm guilty of doing this because I wasn't paying attention and this belt was sticking over too far, there's an adjustment knob on the side of your belt center, so you can always pull it in and make sure that you're dragging this on the G-tape, which won't hurt it versus the wheel or more importantly, the, t the actual belt. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this down now so I can sand out those couple spots.
Okay, I've taken out all the white. I've just a little bit showing right here, but I think I'm cool. So I think I'm good there. And the tape's not destroyed. The bladder's not destroyed. This one's gonna be a little trickier because I'm closer to the house. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it with this particular sander. Ooh, I might. Okay, I think I got most of it, but not all of it. So I also have this Makita strip sander that I use for tight spots and locations that I can't get a belt sander into. You gotta be careful with these because they can be real tricky, but they're multiple speed and they come in really handy when you're trying to get into specific areas and you can't do it with a bulkier tool like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. They do have a cordless version that I really want, but I just haven't invested in it. Now remember, if the belt is past the side, you can damage the tape, so be careful. That looks pretty good now. Got this, got this. So now I need to go over here and get my other spot done. I drew it out right here. I'm gonna take this down a little bit. And now I'm gonna go ahead and check my fit again and see how we look. All right, so let's get that board up here and see how she looks. All right, that's a nice fit. I'm happy with that. I can still make some adjustments, but the line looks really good. And that, my friends, is how I cut a curved line with a straight saw. So if you like this video or you learned a little something, then don't forget to please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for coming to this channel. We appreciate your support. Thank you for watching these videos and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought of this video. And thanks again for watching, guys. Have a great day.